The latest installment in the crossover fighting series Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite released recently to what appears to have been a mostly positive reception. Of course, it remains to be seen what its longevity will be like, but some people do seem to have taken a liking to it. As a distant observer of Marvel vs. Capcom or a casual fan, I'm definitely not the person to offer a detailed analysis of its mechanics and tell you how it stacks up to the previous highs of the series. However, I believe I can shed light on some of the more questionable aspects of the game in relation to its production values. I'm sure a good amount of the people watching this will already have an idea of what I'm referring to. Fans on social media haven't shied away from mocking some of the game's unusual character models, animations and areas where corners were seemingly cut. Here's a good example from at electric skylab on Twitter. I apologize if this user isn't the original source for the clip but this is where I happen to find it so sorry. Uh, he posted a gif comparing Ghost Rider's level 3 hyper combos from 3 and in Infinite, which is supposed to be his pen and stare from the comics. In 3, the camera dramatically whirls around and zooms into the fire in his eyes. On the other hand, for the Infinite version, the camera is completely still on Ghost Rider's motionless face. Seeing things like that obviously raises a lot of questions about its production. Over the past few months in the run up to its release, I was fortunate enough to speak to a few Capcom employees involved with the project that voiced some of their concerns. I have full faith in their reliability because they provided accurate information months ahead of its announcement regarding the Monster Hunter character recently announced to be coming as post launch DLC. By the way, more on that in a minute. From the beginning of my research into the game's development, the topic that would always come up when I spoke to people at Capcom were concerns about how little was being spent on the game. I wasn't able to get exact figures with regards to budget, but I was given some estimates that are extremely low for a modern game of its standing. A few people put it at being little over half the budget reserved for Street Fighter V's DLC plans. Not Street Fighter V the full game that was released in 2016, but the budget Assigned to create DLC for it. I'm sure I don't need to point out that's very low. This may go some way to explaining why previously available features may be missing and certain animations and models are not up to scratch. And you, Thor, are indeed mighty for a heathen god. A vast amount of Infinite was apparently cobbled together from pre-existing internal assets to cut costs. With regards to the character roster, this was mostly on the Capcom side. The main source of these assets was Marvel vs Capcom 3. Character models were often reused and when it was felt they wouldn't fit, they would sometimes lift assets from other old games. Capcom employees have offered a possible explanation for why some of the finished models might look off. They say that little to no changes were made to adapt those that were recycled. A lot of the time artists were apparently told to simply alter the shaders for the new art style with only minor tweaks being made to make them work. For those lifted from MVC3, a game with a very different art style, the result of this transition was sometimes jarring. The shoestring budgeting approach, as some are describing it behind the scenes, has been met with disappointment by Capcom workers. Their management on the other hand saw no issues with it at all, and believed it wouldn't cause any problems, ignoring concerns highlighted by developers. It was only when fans began deriding certain elements of the new game on social media and forums that their higher ups actually started to take notice. People making fun of Chun Li's appearance in particular is said to have played a big part in this, forcing them to intervene and have parts of the game touched up in time for release. What didn't change, however, is their controversial approach to DLC. Those same sources that revealed details of the DLC to me months ago stated that both Black Panther and Monster Hunter were finished months months before launch and could have easily been a part of the final game. Capcom was apparently even considering it at one point, but ultimately decided to cut them in favour of charging additional fees after launch. This is especially questionable given that there is content related to the DLC characters like Black Panther in the story mode itself. How do you feel about Marvel vs Capcom Infinite and Capcom's approach to the game? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for more. I've started a Patreon for investigative videos like these and the work I do for Unseen64 and Didino Gaming, so if you like what I do, please do consider supporting me. Thanks for watching.